All right, so I'm just gonna speak for my soul. This might ruffle some feathers, but you know, even though it's Men's Mental Health Month, depression isn't real, at least the way most people like to think about it. Now, before you say, you know, you're not a psychologist, Sebastian, you're not a doctor, like what the hell are you talking about? What do you mean depression isn't real? Please watch this video in its entirety before you even bother commenting, giving me your woke opinion, because I do not care unless you watch the entire video. And then if you still have your opinions, then we can have a you know friendly you know discourse about why you believe depression is actually real and it's ruining your life. Now, the reason I'm even making this video is because especially in today's age, in today's generation, people love to use the excuse that because of their depression, they can't go to the gym, they can't eat healthy, they can't stop eating junk food, they can't go out, get up and brush their teeth, they can't get up out of bed, they can't shower, they can't go outside and get some sun, they can't go out and socialize with their friends because of their depression. When in reality, that's not the case at all. It's actually the inverse. The reason you're depressed is because you're not doing those things. The reason you're depressed is because you're not going to the gym. It's because you're not eating healthy. It's because you're not getting sun. It's because you're not going out and socializing with humans. I mean, you have to think about it from a logical perspective. What are we? We're homo sapiens, we're humans. And what have we been doing for generations? We, we go out, we socialize with, with other humans. We're competitive in nature. We strive for goals, you know, meaning career or sports. And we want to be productive. We want to feel valuable. We want to feel like we have a purpose because what happens when you don't have that purpose? What happens when you're not chasing those goals? You fall off track and that's when you get that feeling of depression. Okay, so I, I would say I've never been 100% fully depressed, like to the point where I can't get up and shower and to the point where I'm, I'm not brushing my teeth. I, I haven't been like that, okay? But I have been at very low places in my life, very low points in my life. When I was binge eating every single day, three times a day, junk food, 6,000 calories a day, I was coping with my feelings, right? I was eating whatever I wanted to because it made me feel better temporarily. And that's when I would feel like I was at the closest to being depressed. But what I had to realize was the reason I was eating like shit, the reason I wasn't going to the gym wasn't because of the depression. It's because I had let myself get into that cycle of mediocrity, of comfort. And it was so much easier to just eat whatever and not go to the gym. And so I was stuck in that cycle. But what I didn't know was that's what was keeping me depressed. If I kept doing that, I was going to keep and keep getting more and more sad and worse off and feel worse about myself. And eventually, yes, I'd become 100% fully depressed. But it's not the inverse. You are not depressed. And that's why you can't do those things, those productive things that will actually change your life. It's the other way around. You're not doing those things, which is in turn making you depressed. Okay. And if you've never even, if you're in a dark place right now, and this is what I tell, you know, even my clients who, who have struggled with this man. Yes, it's going to suck to get your ass up. It's going to suck to go to the gym. It's going to suck to do all these things. Yes, it's going to fucking suck. Because you feel like you're in a terrible place. You feel like you're truly depressed. But if you do not do it, what is going to happen? You're going to get worse and worse. You're going to feel worse about yourself. You're going to get even more depressed. Your mental health is going to decline even more. So you have to force yourself. I do not give a damn if you feel like it or not. Okay? Force your ass to get the fuck out of bed. Force your ass to wake up early. Force it. Otherwise, you're not going to get better. And then, you want, and then you blame it on the depression, motherfucker, because you're not getting up. That's why you're depressed. You goddamn idiot. How the fuck do you not realize that? That's the reason you're depressed because you don't force yourself to do these things. And I'm not saying it's gonna be easy. I know it's probably the hardest thing in the world for you to get up and go to the gym when all, maybe you just had a death in the family. Maybe you, you just had your dog die. Maybe you literally just had, you were in a car crash. Whatever the case, I understand people have Terrible, terrible things that happen to them. But you cannot sit there and just feel sorry for yourself. You can't. It is of no help to you and to anyone that looks up to you. Because when, when you sit around it and you're depressed all day, the only thing you're doing is, is you're letting yourself down, but you're also letting down the people who look up to you, the people you could impact with positivity, with, with your actions of discipline. You can inspire them to be better. But if you're just laying in bed all day, not brushing your teeth like a dumbass, just because it's hard to get up. I, I fucking know it's hard to get up. But you do it anyways. Otherwise, you're not going to fucking get better. And that's, that's the reality. I also have some stuff written down here. Let's go on to the next topic. Depression is a luxury. 
It really, truly is. Look what's going on in Palestine right now. Israel is bombing the hell out of those poor children, those mothers, those fathers. It's tearing apart families. There are children, literal four-year-olds, that are being decapitated. There's people in countries. I think there's a genocide going on in Congo as well. I'm not quite too sure about that, but I think I've heard of it. But listen, what I'm trying to say is there are terrible things happening to children, to mothers, to fathers, and they don't have the luxury to be depressed, to say, oh, my mental health. Fuck that, dude. They're fighting for survival. And yes, I know we all go through our own troubles and tribulations and sometimes your problems. Maybe, you know, you're not making the money you want to make. Maybe you're not being able to pay your bills. Maybe you're not able to go to the gym. I know those problems seem really significant, but sometimes it requires that perspective shift of realizing, hey, maybe I don't have it that bad. I have a phone. You know, I have a roof over my head. I have food. I can go to the gym if I wanted to. I can eat healthy if I wanted to. When there's people that are literally starving, when there's people in other countries that are getting de decapitated, where their mothers and fathers are getting blown to bits, maybe I don't have it that bad. So sometimes you need that fucking perspective shift to realize things can get better. They will get better if you just allow yourself to, to get up, to force yourself to go to the gym, to get some sun, to brush your teeth, to go even get a haircut. I just got a haircut and I feel so much better about myself. It's those little things. And people think this doesn't have a direct impact on your mental health when it entirely does. Food quality, guys, is so important. You know, people wonder why they feel terrible about themselves, but they're fucking 40% body fat. They don't go to the gym. They don't get any physical activity. They eat fast food three times a day. Of course, they're going to feel like shit, dude. You look like a fucking bag of milk, right? But imagine if you got your finances in order. Imagine if you were jacked. Imagine if you have had a great relationship. Imagine if you had kids that looked up to you. Imagine if you could impact your community and, and donate all the money you wanted to all the charities of your choice. Do you think you'd really be fucking depressed? No, you wouldn't because you're striving for greater. You're working hard on yourself. And guys, of course, like I've been saying, this is not going to be easy, but there is no alternative. You cannot just feel sorry for yourself and expect the depression to go away on its own. It's not. You have to force it to go away by doing these things I'm telling you. Next thing I want to talk about, because this is what people love to say, <laughs> and Thank you for, if, if you were one of those people that watched till right here, thank you. Because I'm about to break it down and I'm going to dismantle this argument. It's a chemical imbalance. Let's break that down. Let's break it down. So 99% of people, it is, not a, it is not a chemical imbalance for 99% of people. Like I said, it is the things I've been telling you where you're not getting up and you're not making the, the effort to improve your life. For 99% of you, that is the case. Now, let's say 1%, and that's generous because I, it's, it's probably 0.111%. But let's just say 1% to be generous. Let's say you're, you're the special snowflake, and let's say you truly do have a chemical imbalance in your brain. Why the fuck does it matter? I'm asking you, why the fuck does it matter? When I was growing up, I had a club foot, and my mom always told me I can't play basketball. I can't wear low cut shoes. Like I had to wear basketball shoes. Um, I can't do sports. She didn't want me to do any form of, of sports. She didn't want me to weight lift. She didn't want me to squat. But eventually I said, why? Why? Because she was so scared. She had this mindset of my club foot was limiting me. But eventually I said, fuck that dude. I'm not gonna let this club foot hold me back. I'm gonna get into basketball. I'm gonna wear low cut shoes. I'm gonna start running. I'm gonna start squatting and weightlifting, And look where I am now right? I'm in incredible shape and I help people get in shape. But what if I had lived with that limited mindset? Same thing. I grew up with asthma. Same thing. My mom didn't want me to do sports. She took me out of soccer. She, she never let me play outside with other kids because she was like, Hey, I don't want you to have an asthma attack because it happened once. Eventually I said the same thing. Why? Why? Fuck that. I'm not going to let that limit me. I got into sports again. I started doing basketball again, started weightlifting. I pushed myself because it's all about even if you do have these things, even if you do are, are genetically predisposed with a, a chemical imbalance, why the fuck does it matter? Why are you going to let that dictate what you do with your life? Why are you going to let, let that dictate if you're happy or not? You know, there, there's people that have cancer. They have a brain tumor in their brain. And I would argue that's the worst imbalance you could have in your fucking brain. A goddamn tumor, dude. Right? And some of these people are the happiest people you'll ever see. Why is that? 
Even though they have all the reason to be depressed, to be sad, why are they some of the happiest people you'll ever meet? It's because they have perspective. They know they're not gonna be here for that much longer. And so why not enjoy the life that they have while they have it? Why not spend time with their family members, smiling, laughing, you know, re rejoicing their, their previous memories, you know, eating their favorite foods and listening to their favorite songs? Why can't that be you? Even though they know they're gonna pass away because they have a tumor in their brain, they're still happy. And, you know, you could call that a chemical imbalance. That's a huge imbalance in their brain, but they still look for ways to be happy. So don't ever tell me it's a chemical imbalance. Even if it is, who gives a fuck? Let's get to the next point. Oh, I love this one as well. Let's dismantle this point. Let's say you have a very traumatic moment, right? Most traumatic thing you can think of. Let's say your dad dies or, you know, let's say you get, God forbid, you know what I'm trying to say, right? Assaulted sexually, maybe regularly get beat up, right? And you feel like you need a pill to help you grieve that. Let's just go with the dad example because I feel like, you know, grief is something that a lot of people go through, okay? Let's say your dad passed away and you feel like you need a pill to cope with that. The pill is not doing anything. It's just a Band-Aid over a knife wound. That's what you're doing. It's a Band-Aid over a knife wound. And you're not actually gonna experience the emotions that you need to experience, that you need to grief properly. Guys, there's a reason we go through hardships. There's a reason people die. There's a reason you experience these emotions. It's because you are meant to experience them. You are meant to go through grief. And so putting a pill in your body to not experience that grief, to give you dopamine so that you're, you're not experiencing grief, that's the worst thing you could do because you're not gonna be able to properly regulate your emotions and not be able to properly grieve. And why is it important for us to properly grieve? Well, I wanna give you an example. When I was younger, my grandpa passed away, he drowned in a lake, okay? And it was on my mom's side, so my mom's dad. And seeing my mom literally scream and cry when it happened firsthand, it was terrible. We were all crying. But just seeing her, like I could see how much it impacted her. And I, I, I had never really met my grandpa but I saw how much it impacted her. Obviously, if your dad dies, that's a really traumatic experience. And as the weeks went by, you know, the first couple of days were terrible. She, she didn't go to work. She cried a lot. You know, my dad was taking care of her. But as the weeks went by, I could see her, you know, starting to get a little more normal, starting to feel a little bit better. And through that, she didn't take a pill. She griefed it naturally. And what do you think that did for me? It taught me how to grieve properly. It taught me, oh my God, traumatic ass shit can happen and you can get through it and things can get better. And so my uncle died about a week or two ago and I was able to grieve him because of what my mom taught me. Do you understand what I'm trying to say now? It's, it's something that's meant to happen. You are meant to experience grief in these emotions because when my uncle died, I was able to relive those memories when I was with him. I was able to relive, relive those experiences. I was able to think about all the lessons he taught me and just be in that. And I was able to grieve him properly, right? But if you put a pill in your body to you know, numb your emotions, to increase your dopamine, you're not gonna be able to grieve properly. And again, like I've been saying, guys, these things are in our life for a reason. They're meant to teach you a lesson, to help you grow as an individual. That way you can pass this knowledge on to your kids, to the people around you. Like I'm passing it on to you right now. And I wanna talk about how experiencing those moments, those traumatic moments will help you. Let's think about, you know, again, my uncle's death. Me being, or my, my grandpa's death from my mom, me being able to relive those experiences, what does it teach me? It teaches me that life is finite. You're not gonna be here forever. And so in turn, whenever I'm with my friends, whenever I'm with my dad or my mom or other family members, maybe my aunt, maybe my other uncle, what do you think I'm gonna do when I'm with them? I'm gonna value their presence that much more. I'm gonna value them being in front of me that much more. I'm gonna actually be present when we're together, when we're at the lake together, when we're at church, when we're at a ceremony together. I'm gonna to value it that much more 
because of my uncle's death, because of my grandpa's death, because I know that we're not gonna be here forever. And I know what can happen in like a split second. And that's why I believe we're meant to go through things. We are meant to struggle. We are meant to have hardships. That doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you though. That doesn't mean there's a chemical imbalance in your brain. It just means you're human. It means you're regular, dude. And so th this is to kind of conclude the video. Like I said, hopefully if at the beginning you were like, Sebastian, what the fuck, you're not a psychologist. Hopefully you can see my points now about why I believe depression really isn't a thing, even though it's men's mental health. And why I think if you actually just get your shit together, you can cure your depression. And why I also believe, you know, there's no such thing as a chemical imbalance. And if there is, why should it affect you? And then finally, if you do go through something traumatic, it's there for a reason. And you're meant to overcome it. And that way, you know, you can teach your kids. That way you can teach the future generations how to grieve properly. But guys, putting a, a Band-Aid on a knife wound is never the solution. Taking a pill for your depression is never the solution. Understand that you're human. We're all going to go through tough shit. But it's, you're only going to come out stronger. It's there, it's there for a reason. I promise. I really hope this video helped enlighten some of you. Um, thank you for listening to me. And if you don't agree with it, that's completely fine. I love you. And you, know, you can leave a comment below telling me how much you hate me, if I'm a piece of shit, or why you don't agree with me in a, in a nice manner. But thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you do, if you would like one-on-one -on -one coaching in terms of stopping your binge eating, getting in the best physical shape of your life, and improving your nutrition as well, and all these other good, amazing things, you can book a free consultation call with me using the first link in the description. And I hope you have the best day of your entire life.